So pectin. Pectin is a chemical that is found in certain foods and fruits. And if you eat it, it'll help reduce the amount of smackiness in your mouth, in your voice, uh, when you're recording your voice. And one food that has a good amount of pectin are green apples. And so green apples are often eaten during actual voiceover sessions. <laughs> They're eaten during actual voiceover sessions. So it helps reduce the amount of mouth noise that the actor records into the microphone. And that, my friends, is the kind of value you get watching VO Booth. You get actual voiceover facts that are real and helpful that you don't get from anywhere else. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, anyway, yes, welcome, welcome back to VO Booth. My name's Tyrone. Um, no, but that, that is actually true. And a lot of voiceover sessions I work on, uh, they will get green apples for the actors to eat so that there's a lot less mouth noise and clickiness in their voice. Um, some actors are really good about not being clicky, but some aren't. So um, the, the reason I mentioned that was, one, it's, it's an actual fact, and I wanted to talk about more voiceover stuff. Um, second, I, uh, I know there's a documentary out called I Know That Voice. It's about voice acting. And, oh, by the way, well, I'll, I'll talk about the game eventually, but I just wanted to get this out of the way. So there is a, a thing, a, a documentary about voice acting, and I haven't seen it yet, um, but around the time it came out, like, a bunch of people uh, I, work, I work with, like, a lot of actors I've met, um, they are you know, talking about it and raving about it. And, you know, it, for good reason, because either they were in the documentary or a lot of, you know, their friends were in the documentary, and so they just enjoyed it a lot. Um, so I always thought it was like a great documentary. And then, um, I was watching a, a stream done by this one up here called Chip Cheesum. And he basically said that the documentary was just a bunch of circle jerking. I don't know if he used that exact term, but it was, a, it was basically a bunch of voice actors patting each other on the back and dropping names is what he said. I have no idea if that's true. But the one thing he did say he liked about the documentary was that, um, there was one... He said he liked any time they talked about something technical or like a behind the scenes thing. And so he said like the one example that they gave was the whole putting a pen in front of your mouth. And uh, so so that it avoids making pee pops in the microphone, which is true. I've seen it done all the time in voiceover sessions. Um, so, yeah, I <laughs> that just inspired me to relay another sort of technical thing. Um in hopes that this LP channel can actually offer something unique. Because, um, again, Justin and I both work on vo like actual voiceover video game projects, so um, I always felt it was, you know, it'd be a nice thing if this channel um, communicated that a little bit more. And so, there you go. That's your fun fact of the day to repeat across message boards or uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> anyway, so getting back to uh, Trails in the S Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky... Um, so, as you saw a few minutes ago while I was rambling about the green apple thing, uh, the, we actually are going in, onto the job board to start accepting um, just multiple jobs. And so, they kind of range from a lot of things. If you looked on the job board, there were two main ones um, that we're looking at right now. Um, the first is kind of a fetch quest. Um, this took me a really long time my first time through just because I had no idea... Like, whatever it was, was in that little grate, and then you have to go to the sewer and all that stuff. Um, also, I'd never actually walked to the sewer before, um, so it was kind of difficult to figure, like, you, you kind of lose your perspective in the city just because you can rotate the city. Um, yeah, oh, here we go. Here's where the sewer, di sewer is. Um, yeah, one of the problems with the fact you can kind of rotate the camera is that it really throws off your perspective, so it... Um, uh, I did not mean to get into that battle, by the way. Um, I was looking to do a heal point, and uh, oh look, he beat him in one hit. My my babies are so strong; <laughs> they're so much stronger than they were in the very first uh, the sort of tutorial missions. Um, anyway, it's easy; it's kind of easy to get uh, lost in the city just because you're rotating the camera all the time, and sometimes it's hard to remember what the city looked like from one angle compared to another. 
Um, but anyway, the all these different quests, they sort of alternate between fetch quests and, you know, just attack monsters. Um, I mean, there are a few other things, too. This is kind of the fetchiest of fetch quests right here. It's just, it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's like, hey, I'm looking for something, then you gotta go find it. Um, and I've gotta say, I don't really like fe fetch quests in general, and I don't really <laughs> like them that much in this ga game either. Um, there are a few times where uh, your fetch quest kind of evolves into something better. Or it, it's I, I can't even think of an example, so I don't know why I'm pretending I I'm, I know what I'm talking about. Um, oh, by the way, that was just I was just giving an example right there of how if you're fighting enemies that are like a swarm, like these little guys, physical attacks basically miss. I don't think I demonstrated that in the um, the first time they were in the sewers, but there you go. And But yeah, I'm um, personally as a gamer, I don't like fetch quests just because um, this is going to make me sound like an idiot. Honestly, <laughs> it's, it's not going to make me sound good. Um, but for me, if I have trouble finding where I need to go in a in a game, then it actually physically makes my head hurt. I so if I'm a, a quest where I'm just kind of tasked with looking for something as opposed to just fighting an enemy, um, it can be frustrating for me. It can actually make me you know, not make me dizzy, like, I don't get nauseous or throw up, but, like, I do have to put the game down if I'm having particular trouble finding a location of somewhere. Um, I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because I'm constantly, like, my eyes are constantly, like, looking around at the screen more than usual. Maybe it's because uh, it's frustration. Maybe it's both. Um, but, yeah, just personally as a gamer, uh, and that's, and kind of related to that, I'm not very good at, well, it's not that I'm bad at them, but I also have the same problems when I do um, like Metroid like games, Metroidvania games. I try not to use that term because uh, another LP group I watch called Game Grumps, uh, <laughs> Aaron apparently doesn't like the term Metroidvania, so I don't know why I care. I've never met him, but I he seems to know a lot about Metroid, so I just sometimes don't try to avoid the term Metroidvania. Um, but anyway, and so I'm also those games also make my head hurt, kind of, kind of because. They kind sort of similar to a fetch quest. Those games um, make you look around a lot, and you kind of have to find your way. Which some, I mean, is great. I think it's a great those game uh, Metroid games in particular. I don't have met much familiarity with uh, Castlevania games, but Metroid games in particular, I think their um, design is really good. So um, I don't fault the games for having that kind of design. Um, but one Metroid game I actually played a lot though was Metroid Prime. Which, um, <laughs> another genre I can't really play that well are first-person shooters, or just first-person games in general. And, because those also make my head hurt. And so, Metroid Prime, somehow I beat that game, despite the fact that um, it combines, like, the Metroid level design with first-person mechanics. And so, um, yeah, that was another game that really hurt my head, but somehow I was able to uh, get through it. So, um... There you go. If you want to know my personal preferences for games, um, a lot of times it doesn't have to do with the quality of the game. It has to do with how how poorly my brain works, and so I can't, I can't play games that make me think too hard. Um, that's that's a little, that's kind of an exaggeration, but um, there you go. That's some insight into my mind. So I think the uh, quest I'm about to do next is I don't know I don't know what I'm doing at this point in the game. Honestly, I think oh. Uh, you have to report um, what you did, and so I um, and you might you you'll see that there's a plus zero on both of those um, parentheses things, and a lot of times I, I mentioned this before, but a lot of times that means there's extra points or extra money you can earn based on doing extra te like doing the particular mission in a particularly good way. I don't know if I explain it right. Um, they're like just bonus objectives, I guess, would make sense. And I don't, I, th I think bonus objectives are cool, but they're really easy to miss at, at a certain point in the game. And so, um, I did not miss any bonus objectives though in that last mission. That it just didn't have any. Um, but it'll still say plus zero. And so, right now, I'm looking for the small. So, throughout the game, there are several 
um, monsters that you just approach. They're, they're, oh, as you can see right there, um, as you approach monsters, they start becoming more visible as if you have some eye line. And it's, uh, that's just another kind of neat thing about the game is that sometimes you get ambushed by monsters if you're just uh, moving a little too fast. Um, just because you won't, you, they're kind of transparent as you can see when you're far away. And so if you're not paying attention, you'll just run right into them. Um, but there are several missions throughout the game where there'll be kind of a, not really a boss monster. It's not really story relevant. Um, but it is, it's a, um, it's kind of like a mini boss monster, I guess you could say so. And once you approach it, it'll actually give you an option to fight it where you can just run away or you can, um, because these are actually much tougher than the enemies that are in the area at that, at this point in time, uh, which is why I say they're a mini boss monster. Um, Cause as you can see, physical attacks don't work very well at all against this thing. Um, and this is, uh, I, I think I've said this before, but this sort of post, this is post commentary and this gameplay I'm recording it. I've, I've played and beaten this game before, but I haven't, I don't remember a whole lot. So sometimes you, you will see me hitting enemies with attacks that are completely ineffective just because I don't remember. I, I beat this game about, I want to say six, five months ago, maybe. Um, and so you'll see me just make mistakes. And this is, so this will be kind of like a, uh, this more or less, this will be kind of like uh, watching someone play, not quite like the first time, but you know, still with some incompetence. Um, so as you can see, I kind of got into this fight uh, not too early uh, for my level. Like this is, I'm kind of like evenly matched with this thing, um, with these two. So I'm alternating between just using magic attacks and using uh, Estelle's healing ability. I have no idea why I decided to use. Oh, you know, it's because I, I was going to get a critical because I, have a, I had a critical bonus. And so I was like, oh, maybe dual, you know, dual strike will do something and save some of my magic which it didn't it was still completely useless and if you're wondering why i'm not having estelle use any actual um attacks it's because if you look at um it's you it's kind of i kind of go by it pretty quickly but when you select a monster you can see um how much um how much elemental damage um will be affected by based on the element obviously and so Estelle at this point, I didn't really optimize her to fight this thing. So right now she can only use a water, a, a water attack and water attacks actually do only half to him. Whereas if I was smart and I had planned ahead and I attached a fire quartz to her, it would have done a fire element attack, which would do double. Um, and right now what Josh was doing, he has time magic. Which I don't think any particular monster is, uh, has, it, more or less like it's just they're just neutral to, i think everyone's just neutral to it um i think i'm don't quote me on that but i don't recall any monster um being super weak or super uh resistant against time magic in this game So at this point, I think I'm being really smart because I'm like, aha, so Joshua has, an, he has one more, he can do one more magic attack and he can do his uh, little S break thingy. Uh, so I think, uh, so at this point, I, I think I've gotten the bag. I'm, I'm pretty confident in myself, uh, but as you, <laughs> you, you'll see, there's, there's one thing about this enemy I just completely forgot. Um, yeah, so here we go. He does his little S break, and you know, I, I think I'm being really, you know, really clever. I'm like, ah, like that was the perfect level for this boss. Uh, but the thing I forgot is some enemies self destruct in this game. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I the first time I got a game over in this game, on my first try on like my first playthrough was <laughs> it was on the very last boss of the game, which is understandable. Um, but hey, here on my second playthrough, uh, my first defeat was, you know, on literally, I think, what, the third mission of the game out of, like, probably 100 missions or so, or 50. I, I'm just throwing a number out there. Um, but here, but the reason self-destruct worked, um, particularly well for this monster is because it's a, um, like all attacks in this game, there's a, um, radius to it. 
And so, basically, <laughs> I made the mistake of staying right next to it throughout the entire battle. Um, which is kind of pointless. If all you're going to do is use magic against an enemy, um, staying right by it is kind of pointless. Um, because, yeah, I have no idea. I, I just wasn't thinking. I think I just was, you know, felt like just wailing on, like, to me, wailing on something means you're going to, you know, be right next to it and just, like, hammer at it. But, um, yeah, I was just being dumb. Oh, and also, I'm not sure if this happened in the previous battle, but... Um, sometimes the soul blur attack can cause a fainting. I think it's a, the status effect is called fainting, which isn't like fainting, fainting, like the way, uh, like you would think of in Pokemon. Um, but fainting as in like you, the monster just loses a turn, uh, which is why I use that opportunity to just back away from it. And I don't think this particular monster will move towards you. Um, cause it really, aside from the self-destruct thing, it has no reason to, cause it's also using magic against you. Um... So yeah, at this point, like, yeah, so this is basically the battle. I, I should have cut out the other battle, but like, whatever. Um, you can see some of my mistakes. And plus, this battle isn't very long. Um, if this were Final Fantasy X and there were a load of unskippable, unskippable cutscenes uh, between monster fights, then yeah, I would have uh, deleted a little bit. That is a nice thing about this game, though. The, uh, when you choose to retry a fight it just kind of throws you right into it i i mean again i have i've had to retry very few fights um, in the games i've played or in the times i've played this um but it, i mean you saw it. it's just nice that i died and it's like okay we'll just start the battle over with the same uh, you know parameters that we entered it in so yeah now i i finally uh get to defeat the, the boss and i guess the thing with i've never really looked into it but i'm pretty sure s breaks ignore defense modifiers i'm gonna i'm gonna assume that it might be wrong um, i'm just i'm just guessing that just based on the fact that um s breaks don't seem to uh since that monster clearly had like a ton of defense based on how weak my physical attacks were um yeah i'm gonna assume s breaks just go through I'm going to assume S breaks just go through defense. Also, you'll notice uh, in this playthrough I'm running a lot more. Um, that's because... So on my controller, you can switch between walking and running um, if you press down on the uh, left stick. I'm using an Xbox controller on, on my PC. But... So in the first uh, few videos, I was just kind of walking most of the time. And then I realized in the option menu that you can choose which one is default and which one isn't default. Um, so I pretty much changed the default to running. And then if I need to walk, I'm just going to... Uh, rarely do I need to walk unless I'm... It's unless I'm trying to, like, navigate something. There are a few times where you have to be careful about nav navigating something. So, um, but for the most part, running is just... While less realistic because, you know... It, <laughs> I just feel, I didn't want to go through the game so slowly. And yeah, you're going to see I'm going to talk to that little kid every, like every single time <laughs> we beat a mission. Um, just because it's, again, funny dialogue. Um, there are a lot of precocious kids in this game, if I remember correctly. Like the, uh, you saw the, the guy we did the first, the little kid we did the first mission for. He, uh, he was kind of, had a weird, or no, he wasn't weird, but you know. He sounded very adult, uh, much more adult than I was, and I didn't mean to get into that battle again. But you'll get to see another example of how, like, my babies are so strong. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason I was just surprised the first time I came back down here that I was able to beat everything in one hit. Um, after not leveling up that much. Or I don't think so. I... Oh, anyway, uh, next time on VO Booth, we're gonna continue with a main, like, we're gonna do a mission that actually progresses the story a little bit. Eh, I mean, it really doesn't. But you know, it's you need to do it in order to start unlocking other missions too. Uh, so I'll see you guys next time. All right, bye.